All right, we are going to go with the archer. So Wolverine goes back on the stack. And again, don't ever cut towards yourself. That's a bad idea. <laughs> I don't ever learn. I'm not the sharpest knife in the hobby drawer. Come on. There we go. Archer, 1A. Crack the knuckles. We're good to go. So... Uh, it looks like they got the legs on a sprue, or on a, on a gate, on a piece there. Very simple enough. These probably, again, if you had a, a, uh, hobby saw or jeweler saw, uh, you could saw these, reposition them. I don't have one, so unfortunately I'm not going to be doing that today with my hobby knife, otherwise you'd just see me sitting here with, like, it's like basically taking a butter knife to a, a, a steak, and you just cannot cut it with the, the butter knife. Um, so not doing that, but the legs are there. Get over there. And then we have our shoulders, which are also our missile pods, which I just, I know this is the primitive and it might be a long time before we ever, oh, come on. There we go. Before we ever see the classics version, but those missile pods, those are cool. I don't care the fa at the fact that they're not covered. And I also don't care about the fact that they're comically huge, but those are great. Then the two arms come on a sprue, but already one fell off. Oh, but the arms themselves—they've got their, you know, the the lasers on the back of the forearm, so that's cool. We'll go ahead and free this one while we're thinking about it. There you go. And then we got our cockpit head and torso, and then our lower torso. All right, let's go ahead and clean that up. This guy's got a little bit of a tab here on the bottom. That's gone. You're out of there. Um, some light mold lines, but not enough that it makes me want to go ahead and sand them out. I typically will not clean mold lines off of Battletech miniatures uh, for two reasons. One, I don't like sanding down the metal models. I, I find it a pain in the butt and I don't like the metal shavings everywhere no matter how hard I clean up the 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 desk a sliver or something usually will find its way into my hand or my foot and it just it irritates me but also the the, the scale is just so small it's easy to write it off as that's just paneling you know I mean these things are giant robots that makes sense that there would be paneling and all that i mean if it's an obvious mold line you know obvious mold line is obvious then yeah i'll try to clean it up but uh like i just try to do on the front there just by rubbing that that hobby knife to lessen the effect because if i end up doing a wash on these guys that's gonna pop on there and that's gonna be distracting um but your mileage may vary maybe you're a hardcore hobbyist and you want to Make sure no one ever knows that there was a mold line ever on this miniature. And see, he's got a, a, a light one going up and down the forearm there. So, But also there's some detail there. So very lightly, I'm just dragging that hobby knife. And that's it. That's all I'm doing on that. And on the back side. Yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, the other arm... Well, let's see here. Oh, well, that's really cool. He's got little bolts on the bottom of his hand. That's cool. Oh, and the top too. Sweet. I, I really am liking these primitive archers. Just the overall aesthetic. I've got a Project Phoenix archer that I bought right before I got these primitives. And I'm going to try to get rid of that primitive one. Or the, um, the Project Phoenix one. Even though it looks cool... Uh, I just really, really like these primitive ones. Maybe I'll keep the Project Phoenix one, but he's on my garage sale list right now with a bunch of other miniatures that I'll never get around to painting. All right, so we clip those free. Let's go ahead and straighten that out a little bit, smooth it out from where it was cut. Perfect. 
I'm not noticing a lot of flash on this. That, that's a good sign. That's a quality casting. Good on you, Iron Wind. Good on you. Let's see this. There's a mold line that goes from top here straight down. I'm actually going to leave that there because it looks like paneling and it's on the back too but I like it I think it adds extra detail I'm not worried about it if anybody ever questions me on it be like hey it's my model so now we get to assemble him he's gonna be a lot more involved and then dry fitting the hip here I do get some flexibility with how I want to pose the legs he could be walking, um, walking, he could be walking like that, it's kind of cool, kind of generic, but thundering ahead. Um, I don't know if anyone's seen the old classic art, um, I believe it was off of City Tech, of the, the white and brown snow camo um, drac archer just barreling through the city, um, That that's... That, that kind of what's what reminds me of having him like stepping forward like that. We could do that. Um, I had thought about for the archers because I was going to do some level of customization for them for their bases and repositioning of their arms and hands if I could. Their hands are hollow a little bit. And... It's possible, and I'm not going to do it on this first one, but the next one I probably will, is I think I could drill right there, separate the thumb and the forefinger, and then once that I have that opening, is pry them apart a little bit. And you're going, why would you do this? Well, I have, if I can find it, there it is. I have some plastic card I-beams. And so what I want to do is have these archers kind of like going through like city terrain rubble. You know, because obviously these guys lay siege to things. They just launch their LRMs and they just stay behind the front line. And then as they're walking through the devastation, they continue to fire and give cover as the army advances, right? Or the rest of the lances or company, whatever, advance. So... I was thinking maybe an improvised weapon in one of the hands. Not that they would actually do anything functionally in the game. But visually, I think it'd look cool if he's just holding on to his giant piece of flipping eye beam that's like, get near me, I'll hit, hit you like it's a, like a bat. Um, not this one, but the next one I think I'm going to try that with. Or we could try it with this one. You know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Um... It does look like the either hand would be okay for it. They have the same amount of um, width there. So I gotta be very careful here. And you gotta go in at an angle. All right. So I've hit pay dirt. I've gone through. Whee! I've gone through. And I need to just start trying. I said it's like a butter knife but there we go there we go that wasn't too bad that was not bad at all so now let's see y'all a okay it's separated and I'm gonna try yeah so I bent that back a little bit oh Beautiful. He's got an improvised weapon now. 
Hot diggity damn. I like that. That's cool. So, we have that, right? And I had a piece that I had already previously bent in anticipation for this. So, so we're going to just warp that just a little bit more. And that might be a little too big. It might be a little too big. But you know what? I mean, it's Battletech. You kind of go big or you go home, right? I like that. This son of a bitch has, a, has an eye beam. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I love it. I love it when your imagination, when you're doing miniatures or this hobby, you imagine it, it actually becomes reality. It's, it's, it's like magic. It really is. It's like, boom. And I, I for me, I get teleported back to when I was a kid. Um, oh my God, I love it. All right, so let's get this out of his hand for right now. But that's what we're doing. So what I got here is I got some uh, MDF bases. Um, I don't have any of the Iron Wind stuff. Metal bases are really expensive. But these will work. And I when I did the dry fit, these felt pretty snug. Um, I think if I just do the zap gap, oop, or zip kicker, and the and the super glue should be more than enough. All right. So positioning wise, right, we want to have this foot on the ground facing the front part of the hex. If we put the hip on there, how much real estate does he take up entirely? Okay, so he will fill out pretty much the entire front part of that hex. It's a sad hip. I got a little bit of cork. And I do have some 40k gubbins. Like, um, like a door there or something. Could be part of a building. I do have sheet plastic card as well. Hmm. How do I want to play this? We will go with the cork. So this is just like standard cork you would get at Michael's. I'm just going to break it up. I'll save that for my for the others. Because it makes great debris. That might be too much. So let's get a smaller piece. That looks good. And what I'm going to do, hopefully not slice my hand off or finger off, is I'm going to come in at an angle to give it a slight incline to make it easier for that foot. So here now. You guys can see that. Whoop. There we go. That actually, I think, looks good. That makes a lot more sense. Maybe I'll do the running pose on another one. Yeah, we'll do that. Running pose on the other one. So I am going to lay down a little bit of super glue. You could use PVA glue for this too, if you wanted to. Watered down PVA dries, a, dries hella quick and is really, really great. It's a little bit of zip kicker. You could pin the bottom of the foot through the cork to the base. I've done that. Uh, I'm not doing that. I just, I have not noticed the difference between it's adhe adhering to the cork. It's either connected or it's not. There we go. 
If it doesn't want to stick, then we'll go back and we'll, uh, we can do that. Cool. So while that's doing that, we are going to wait on the hip assembly in the other leg. But we can go ahead and we can do the torso and the shoulders. Huh. Alright. So we hit it that side. Actually, before I go any further, we want to do... Yes! Yeah. This guy. I gotta come up with a name for this unit. This awesome lance of three archers. And while that's doing, I can do this one handed. I'm gonna glue this wasp to this base. Yep. Zip kick. Josh is now high. Oh, well, maybe not. Let's get creative. Yeah. Go. You sit over there, Mr. Wasp. You stay cool. I don't want to struggle with the hand putting that on there while it's glued on there, on his shoulder. Just on the off chance that I ruin the seal and it pops right off. So, with that with that thought in mind, I'm just gonna go ahead and pre-glue the bar into his hand. And I've got the indention here where I forced it in. Yes! So, I mean this was a major support beam, I guess. So, we can chip it up a little bit. He, I mean, he is just, this archer's a madman. He's just, just a madman. He's out for blood. He doesn't care. He just wants to hit somebody with a stick. This model's going to be a bitch to store. But you know what? I don't really care. He's going to look great. So, PVA glue, right? Right? Just tacky glue. That's all it is. Just tacky glue. And then my sand that I got in clearance at Michael's. It was on clearance for like two bucks. And then, um... I had a 50% off t uh, t uh, coupon, so a dollar for all this sand. And I got the same thing with, went back later, and it's like, I should have bought more. They were all out of the, the regular one, but once you prime it, it doesn't really matter. So I got this black sand, which I've used too. Same thing, just already black. You still want to prime it. So let's go ahead and base those guys. And I just want a little bit of PVA. Just a little bit. There we go. Boop. Little dab of D. And I want... Use this water. It may have been, I may have gone too far with that, which is fine. Get an old brush. Yeah, I need a little bit more PVA in there. And it looks like this is the uh, reacting the paint that was in there last time. That's just fine. Not a big deal. I'm still just, uh... yeah, here we go. And I'm going to put our mixture here all along the base. You can go super thick with it, depending on the consistency that you have it. You definitely want to wipe it off the edges of the hex or any base that you use. If you have never done this technique of flocking, sometimes you just use like static grass or paint the base green or whatever or even the GW texture paints or even other texture paints yeah and I want some of that over that stuff there yeah careful not to get it on the mech itself 
and this is also a nice way that you can cover gaps um, in your terrain that you built on the base. Wash my brush. Nope. Well, there goes that lid. Alright, and I am just putting him right there in the sand. Mixing it around. Carefully doesn't hit the, the sides there. Give him a pat. Clean up those edges. All goes right back in. And voila! We have a built based Archer 1A with improvised melee weapon. Comically oversized melee weapon. But still, no one's gonna mess with him. Mm -hmm.